what's up you guys i just wanted to come in real quick before the video starts and let you guys know that i created an outline that you guys should check out of important key notes that you guys should pay attention to when studying and i hope this outline helps get you guys motivated to study good luck and enjoy the video What's up you guys, Bree Anna here and as you can tell from the title of this video, I'm going to be giving you guys tips and tricks to passing your adult echo exam. So stay tuned. So the first thing I suggest is giving yourself enough time to prepare for this exam. So I took about a good three to four months to prepare for the exam. Um, and I suggest it because it gives you enough time to take breaks if you need to, um, to relax. So you don't have to stress. If you give yourself three to four months, you just take your time to look over your information and won't allow for stress. So time is an essential thing that you should give yourself. Next step I would suggest is um, decreasing the amount of study material you're looking at. If you're looking at too many things it can overwhelm your you can overwhelm yourself so that's why i suggest looking into the esp conference and um doing that or kind of just going over and just like i said decreasing the amount of stuff you are looking at one thing i did really love are my flashcards. these were a great way to study because sometimes just looking at a paper you don't always want to just look at a paper and there's a book like mm -mm -mm, all the time this was just a nice a nice new way a different way to look at notes so i highly look recommend at least getting the um adult echo cardiographer quiz cards these were awesome they are expensive they're like 60 dollars but like I said, they're like a new way to look at notes. Sometimes you don't want to always just look at a book constantly. So that's why I highly recommend these quiz cards. They're awesome. So briefly, I just want to show you guys the ESP website. So here you can access their seminars. Um, with the seminars, you'll get their booklet and you'll get access to the Exxon. And right here, I'm going to show you the prices like I said, they are pricey, but it's worth it because the book has all everything condensed into one booklet. And that's basically the only thing you really need to look at. And like I said, you get uh, practice questions, which is Exxon. And do the seminar, the students get a special access, six weeks access um, to the Exxon with the purchase of the $300 seminar. But if you choose not to do the seminar, you can purchase Exxon on its own, but it's still very pricey. But look at like $40 just for two hours. That's crazy in my opinion. But like I said, it's a good website. That's the only thing. Like expensive, but it's really good. Um, then I'm going to show you the quiz cards that I did buy, which I liked. A lot of my classmates actually decided to go with the flash drive as well. So if you want to get that, that's also an option. Basically, the flash drive has a bunch of echo images that you can look at. So it's a hit or miss, I think. Some people liked it and some people didn't. Depends. Next tip I suggest is looking into Ultrasound Registry Review. It's an excellent um, website that gives you different different options. I want to put that out. So that they will either teach you the information or they'll even just give you quizzes, a whole bunch of quizzes. I did the $40 option and basically that's just a set of quizzes that you can take and they have ex detailed explanations and it's just awesome i highly suggest looking into that if for some reason if you can't do the esp conference this is a great secondary choice to looking into so this is the ultrasound registry review this website is awesome for those who decides to go the alternative route and not do the esp conference 
It has a lot of different lesson options and it even has practice exams. I My primary use for this website was its practice exams. I did the $40 option. You get about seven exam questions or seven exam reviews, I mean. And it was very helpful, very beneficial. I definitely suggest it if you cannot do the Exxon and the um, seminar to definitely look into ultrasound registry review. Highly recommend as a secondary option for sure. And like I said, those are the package options they have for you depending what you're looking for. And I'm going to show you which one I went for. I um, accessed this about a month ahead of my exam. So there you go. I did the $40 option. So I highly suggest thumbs up for me. So another resource I suggest you guys look into is getting the Davies Adult Echo Review exams. It consists of over like I think 600 questions. This booklet was very beneficial. I worked on it with one of my classmates who had the book. I highly suggest getting that booklet. It was pretty helpful. The questions are very hard, but it's one of those things, if you can do well on those questions, you will do good on your, um, you'll do good on the board exam. So I suggest also looking into getting the Davies Adult Echo Review. So the next thing I suggest reviewing is pictures different pictures is a must you need to review um regular pathology your pathology you need to review your tee pictures definitely review tee pictures with pathologies and without pathology tee is i highly suggest, i had so many tee pictures it's crazy i didn't expect it because i didn't prepare for tee pictures but definitely look into preparing tee pictures next i would highly suggest is focusing on your measurements and remembering your numbers um i didn't think this was going to be important but you need to know your numbers especially for no numbers for significant stenosis for significant regurg you need to know your mean gradient you know to know your aortic valve area your mitral valve area like you need to know your numbers and the earlier you start remembering the numbers the better i honestly started preparing and remembering the numbers later on i wish i would have started remembering them earlier so start remembering abnormal what's abnormal and what's normal numbers that's highly important remember um what's like a number wall thickness remember what's might be looks dilated like you need to remember your numbers um i didn't think they were important but like that's important. So I just want to give you guys an example. I was looking through my binders and I just want to give you an example of what I mean by numbers. So this is an example. One example is like knowing your um your left ventricle values. Like knowing those in great detail is important. Uh, what else? If I could find the stenosis ones, that would be great. But I don't know where they are. So hold on. Let me get back for. So you definitely want to know about your mitral valve diseases and like stenosis you want to know about aortic stenosis you want to know about um tricuspid stenosis you want to be able to know your numbers and i'm trying to show you what i mean for an example oh uh, this one so like right here this is an example so you want to know numbers like this for evaluating stenosis with mean gradient for example so they'll have so this is just for the mitral valve but a lot of all the vowels have important numbers like this, for example, that you want to remember. Is it showing? Yeah. So the way I memorize these is that I will memorize the moderate numbers. So I know anything between 5 to 10 is moderate. So basically anything greater than 10 will be severe. Anything less than 5 is mild. So an example of uh, some type of numbers you need to know. Because on the exam, they'll give you all these numbers and then they will ask you, is this considered severe? Is this considered abnormal, moderate? And you need to know which one it is. So that's why it's important to really study your numbers and know what's abnormal, what's normal, and things like that. So I highly, 
highly suggest knowing those numbers by heart like live by those numbers remember those numbers the earlier you remember the numbers the easier um what else definitely focus on diastolic dysfunction know about that but yeah you basically gotta know everything guys you basically gotta know everything so that's why i'm telling you you guys you have to give yourself adequate time to study and like i said if you have a good program they are will prepare you for your exam like they'll give you the information you need to prepare and then it's up to you to broaden what you use to help study whether like i said like the bind this is these information is on my binder and my binder a lot of this stuff is going to be was on my exam like when I'm looking at it, a lot of the stuff I have in my binder was in the exam. But it's up to you to rather, you don't, maybe you don't want to really use your notes to study. But you want to use, like I said, you want to go with the ESP conference. You want to invest in some other books to help you study. But like I said, just study my tips and you should pass as well. Um, Like I said, so if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, just drop a comment down below like share and subscribe thanks for watching guys see ya